Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, no matter where you are, whenever you're watching this, this is Floating in Dreams. Today I have another battle of the palettes for you, and today we're talking neutrals. Welcome to everybody watching today, thank you so very much for joining me. Today's battle of the palettes is going to be all about four good smack in the middle neutral palettes. These aren't very warm toned, they're not very cool toned, these are really good smack in the middle neutral palettes. and. Three of these I already knew very quickly that I wanted to put those to the test and then I need a fourth one is like, mm, I'm not sure which one to put in here, but I'm gonna do 12 rounds where I'm going to compare and contrast each of these palettes, give one of them a point. I'm gonna be very strict here. I'm going to give one palette a point and then we'll declare a winner of today's battle of the neutral eyeshadow palettes towards the end of this video. And in case you're new here, hi, my name is Maika. I live in the Netherlands. I like to come on here and chat about eyeshadow palettes. As a secretary's reviews, getting the use out of my makeup. Because I have fair skin with a cool to neutral undertone, I deem myself a snow angel. And if you'd like to join the snow angel club, then definitely click subscribe down below. So yes, another battle of the palettes. I've got four neutral palettes here for you today that we're going to put against up against each other. As I did last time, I have 12 different rounds with like a different like topic that we're going to compare these palettes on, give them points. You can give points as well. These are just based off of my preferences. But if you have different pre preferences, you can just like do this along with me. And then maybe you get to a very different winner than I do. That's perfectly fine. Um, and yeah, I have four really nice ones. So let me show you. In the red corner, we've got the Tartlet in Bloom. In the green corner, we have the Persona Identity One. In the yellow corner, we have the Nabla Cutie Nude. And in the blue corner, we have the Kashmiri from Viseart. So those are the four palettes that we are going to be comparing and contrasting in today's video, and we will declare a win winner towards the end. So. Let's just get started. Round number one is price point. So the uh, Tartlet in Bloom is 45 euros. The Persona Identity One is 43.95. The Nabla is by far the cheapest at 23.50, and the Viseart Kashmiri is 44.95. And in here, just because it's cheapest. This is only just about price point. It's not just about like bang for your buck kind of thing. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, but the yellow palette, so the yellow corner is going to get a point. The Nabla here wins because it's half the price point of these other palettes. Round number two is about availability. Where can you buy these palettes? Are these very easy to get your hands on or not? I live in the Netherlands, so that's the perspective I'm coming from. So the Tarte palette in Bloom is a bit easier to get. I'm not really sure yet about shipping and handling fees with this, but they do now have a website that says that they, you know, when you click on it, they's like, oh, we see you're in the Netherlands, would you like to pay in euros? So they do now have a setting for the Netherlands on their website, but most of the Tarte things I tend to buy through French Sephora, which if you have any experience shopping through the French Sephora website, let me tell you, it's all in French, which with my rudimentary secondary school French is very unpleasant. And there are things on that website that they don't ship anywhere else, which is always a bit of a faff to find out because you don't find out about it until everything is in your cart because the website automatically, you know, if you're first signing in, sort of sees you as being in France and not until you like enter your address will it change and then it tells you, oh, we're sorry, we can't ship this to you, which has happened to me in the past with some things. But they seem to have a website that does ship internationally. Like I said, I don't know anything about the shipping handling fees on there because I've never been through that, but it's good to see that because before Tarte was only like US only. Um, Persona is you as only. So they are only available through their official website. I think Ulta has them too. I cannot access Ulta, so I don't know. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's only helpful though to people who are in the US, but yeah, Persona is probably the hardest to get. Then the Nabla palette is available both through their official website as well as Beauty Bay, and both of them ship internationally. And then lastly, the Viseart palette is available most widely. Uh, Cult Beauty, Boozy Shop, 
uh, Beautylish, B Beauty Bay, official Viseart website, Sephora. Like, Viseart is around. The Viseart Cashmere definitely wins here because they are the best available. Round number three is about grams of product. So if we then look at the, uh, at the price point and how much we actually get for our money, because three of these are essentially the same price point, but do we also get the same amount of product? In the Tarte, we get 18 grams of product. That's pretty okay. 12 shades, 1.5 grams roughly per pan. That's pretty decent. Then the Persona Cosmetics, however, is the same price point, similar-ish, but it only has 1.13 grams of product in every pan. So in total, this is less than 14 grams of product. So you get like a, quite a bit less product in this one. Um, the Nabla only has six shades. It's eight grams for the entire palette, but that does translate to 1.3 grams per pan. So that's pretty decent. Um, and then the, like a standard eyeshadow pen is 1.2 grams. So most of these palettes give you more than a standard eyeshadow pen. And then the Viseart Kashmiri, I was surprised. It comes with 1.5 grams in each pen, which is also 18 grams. So here it would be a tie between red and blue, um, because the Tarte and the Viseart both have 18 grams of product, but because this looks like it's going to contain very little product, just from looking at how to like how big the pans are, and you're still getting the same amount. I think the Viseart de deserves a point here, and that's why the blue corner gets another point. So we've talked about grams already, so let's talk about the number of pans then. Here again, we have a lot of similarities. Uh, so round four, amount of pans, Tartlet, Persona, and Viseart all have 12 pans, and the Nabla one has six. I would say here, just because I don't know why, there's just something about the way these pans are organized that I find very aesthetically pleasing. So for me, the Tarte wins here. So Tartlet in Bloom gets the point. Round number five is packaging. So what is the packaging like? And for that, I'd like to show you the palette as we talk about it. So Tarte is plastic with a snap closure. We do get a large enough mirror here that you can actually see your entire face in. So if you were to travel with this, it feels sturdy enough. I've had this for a long time. It's never broken on me. The hinges are still intact. Really lovely. And then we have the Persona palette. And this is very similar to the Tarte. I feel it's perhaps a smidge thicker than the Tarte. It feels a bit heavier. Um, it again has that snap closure. It's a little softer than the Tarte. Again, a nice sized mirror, um, and uh, the packaging was actually redesigned. I'm not exactly sure what they changed about it, but I do believe it first came with like a picture on the front. I have the later rendition, and then they also upped the price of the palette by a little bit, because these used to be cheaper, um, but the new ones are more expensive because of the sturdier packaging, I've, I've been told. Um, so that's the Persona. Then the Nabla is cardboard. It's really nice and small because, you know, you only get your six shades in here. But I do find it's a bit chunky because this palette is thicker than the In Bloom. Like, if you hold them side by side, this actually has more height to it. Um, there is a mirror in the lid, which is nice. Um, and it's got the magnetic closure, which is a bit more satisfying as well. Um, but this mirror is a bit useless because, you know, the packaging is quite small. The, pa the, 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 the mirror is a good quality mirror for sure, but I, this mirror is a bit too small to really do anything other than like reapplying your lipstick. And then packaging wise, the Viseart for me is a true, true winner. I'm just gonna say it straight away. This is thin, it's small, it's very travel friendly. It's cardboard packaging, so it's lightweight and it's got removable pans. And I believe that what you can do with this is that you can sort of like put it down like this if you were so inclined so it actually stays upright, um, which they've also talked, like if you have little space in a vanity or 
you know, you're traveling somewhere. So this, this packaging is just very well thought through. And I also like how the Kashmiri isn't as boring as other Viseart palettes, because we do get a little bit of a packaging design there. Uh, the mirror in here, I would personally never use. That's the only downside here. But yeah, removable pans is the only palette here today that has that. So only for that reason already, this would be a winner, but I love how small and curated it is, and you still get as much product as you get in the Tarte. What's not to love? Round number six is level of pigmentation. And I think that in the Tarte palette, we get some good level of pigmentation, but it's, it's not the best. Like by now, I feel there are more pigmented eyeshadows than what we get in the Tarte lip palettes. The deeper shades in here can be a little bit more difficult to work with, and we do get three of those. They can be a little bit patchy and they need more building up. The Persona, in terms of pigmentation, I think is the best one here. It's very easy to blend still though, despite it being quite pigmented, but I feel these shades are really nicely, very saturated, very still buildable as well, but so, so good in terms of like, if you love your pigment, then this is definitely a good one. In the Nabla, I feel we get the sheerest formula in terms of like it being very buildable. I like that. I, I feel the palette makes it just a lot easier to use if we get a more buildable formula. Um, but I don't feel this is, these are the most pigmented shades ever. And I feel with this one, swatches online can make it look a lot better than when you were to swatch it yourself. You know what I mean? And then finally for the Kashmiri, I feel that it has really great pigmentation as well from start to finish, the entire palette. It's also very easy to work with, but since we're only judging the palette at the moment for pigmentation, and just with the experience I've had with the Persona, the green corner is going to get a point because I think the Persona is quite possibly the most pigment palette, pigmented palette we're talking about today. So let's get a little bit deeper into these shades. So let's talk about textures and finishes and things that we've got going on. In the Tarte palette, we get some pretty nice shimmers, but they're very muted shimmers. Like nothing in this palette is super metallic or anything. It's more like satiny, I would say. So the mattes are good, but again, okay. When it comes to from like a pigment pigmentation standpoint, the shimmers are in here are nice as well. But like I said, more satiny. So we don't get a lot of variation when it comes to our textures or finishes. In the Persona palette, we have, uh, again, we do get mattes and shimmers, but the shimmers are all like a, a similar level of shimmer. There aren't any sort of like yummy sparkly shades in here. In terms of finishes, this isn't a very, very, like not a very varied, um, that's a bad sentence, but it, yeah, in terms of different textures and finishes, there's just not a lot of variation in this palette. Um, the shimmers are beautiful and it has a little bit more of that metallic -y, vibrant shine to it, but without it being too sparkly. So it's like metallic satin amped up to a new level for sure. In terms of getting some more textures and finishes, I think the Nabla one takes the cake here. This palette comes with two latex shades. I believe they're both the same formula, especially this one. And these latex shades, they started putting into these cutie palettes for the first time. And some people love them. Other people hate them. I like them. Um, some people got hard pen with them very quickly, but we do get some things that are a little bit more sparkly in here, which I like. Um, these latex shades are a little drier for sure, a little thinner, but I do feel they work really well. And because we get some more variation in here in terms of textures and finishes, I think it's a good one for this pick. But we still have the Viseart to talk about. So the Kashmiri, like the Persona and uh, Tartlet, I feel has mattes and shimmers, but there, there isn't a lot of variety in terms of the level of shimmer we get in these different shades. So not a lot of difference in terms of texture. Um, nothing is overly sparkly. Everything again has that like satin metallic, but I feel this is like in between the Tarte and the Persona. So if the, the, the Persona uh, shimmers are too vibrant for you and the Tarte ones are too soft, then the Viseart is like smack in the middle for me. For me, because of this being about texture and finishes, 
the Nabla wins because I feel that with them trying to do something differently in terms of like textures we get in a small six pan, I think is quite revolutionary. You don't see that a lot. So yellow gets the point. And then we need to discuss the shimmer to matte ratio in the palette. So we all know I love a shimmer over a matte. So that might already give you give away what I like the best here. In the Tartlet in Bloom, we get mainly mattes. There's only three shimmers. <laughs> so for me, this is definitely going to be a no. If you love your mattes, then maybe the Tartlet one is the best one. In the Persona, we get a nice 50-50 split of six mattes and six shimmers. Same in the Nabla, we get a 50-50 split, three shimmers, three mattes. But the Viseyard, 12 pans, eight of them shimmer, four mattes. So yes, the Viseyard definitely wins here, so the blue corner gets another point. And then we need to discuss the color story. So let's start with the Tarte. In here, I've always loved how this color story is a row of cool tones, neutrals, and warm tones. So no matter what you do, if you're a beginner in makeup and you don't know how to put shades together, this palette just spells it out for you. Each row is a look. But because of that, we get those three really dark shades at the end. Did we need three dark shades that have the same level of depth, but mainly have different undertones? And especially these two, you can barely see a difference between them in the pan. And I feel they do the exact same thing in the palette and when I put them on my eyes. So for that reason, in terms of color story, yes, it's versatile. You can do a lot with it. I'm not going to lie. But that is more of your beginner palette rather than like being super excited and different and versatile. Persona has really, really nice quality, as we already mentioned. But in terms of color story, what you should know is that this was designed with brown eyes in mind. So if you have blue, green, gray eyes, this may just not be for you to get your eyes to pop. I feel because I have brown eyes, it works really well for me. Um, it does have a mix of warm and cool shades like the Viseyard does, but I, I feel that in here, I get quite a lot of depth. Like these mattes are all like a similar level of depth. This is a bit more cool toned, this is a bit more warm toned, but what I'm missing is a cool toned like taupey transition shade that is a combination of these two, like that's in between them. What I do when I use this palette is that if I use this shade, I always blend it with this. So I kind of dip my brush into both. Um, and that way I can get like the right, uh, why am I point pointing at that shade? I should have pointed at that shade. The matte creamy shade, it's right here. And I thought it was, I was using the viewfinder to look at this, but yeah, I sort of go between those two and then I, I can make it work, but I'm missing a good cool tone transition that works on my fair skin for sure. So I feel it's not perfect from that perspective. And I also feel that I don't get the mattes to go with some of the shimmers as well, um, because this, this is a bit too purple to really go with the plum. It's like the same thing. So that's why this is a bit less perfect for me from that point of view. In the uh, cutie palette from Nabla, I feel that the black in here is just a bit harsh compared to everything else that's going on in it. I, I think that if this black had been a really nice, dark, saturated, chocolatey brown shade, that I would have liked this even more. I don't love blacks. If you love black eyeshadow, then this, I think this is the only one that actually has a black. Um, so you might like this then, uh, but I am personally not a lover of black eyeshadow. And I also think that these two shades, they're both golds. It's a six pan palette. Why do we have two shades that are pretty much identical? It beats me. So for me, yeah. And also these two shades, like when you swatch these side by side, these two mattes, they are also quite samey. So for a six pan palette, you can do a lot with it because it has the textures, but in terms of color story and different depths and undertones and shades that we get in here, it's less versatile than the other options. But my favorite <laughs> is the Viseyard Kashmiri because, let me show you, let me talk to you about this. Again, we get your mix of warmish shades. Let me point at it the right way over here. We get some rosy shades, we get the cool tone shade, we get neutrals. So it's got everything. It, this is the only one that has a true rosy tone to it as well, I feel. Um, so what I love about this one though, 
is that you can again make this pretty foolproof but it takes a bit of time getting used to it if you are a beginner because you can use this as quads or as duos this is another quad another quad this is a quad this is a quad you can use them as you know break the palette into two that way you can use each row um, you could also go uh, like diagonal with this one so I feel that this is quite possibly the, the the easiest to work with like there's just so many different looks you can do with this depending on which shade you put together and everything will come out perfectly um, I just wish the only gripe I have with this to make it perfect for me if this matte cream would have been a taupe transition shade because I feel that this is like satin and this is matte but it's like essentially the same shade so I didn't need both but I would have liked something that was like like bridging the gap between these two shades that I that I would have liked it even better but I actually have that in my Lila Petit Four Lilas that has taupey shades so I know I can swap those out if I'd like to um, but yeah for me here just because of the versatility Kashmiri definitely wins so the point goes to the blue corner and then we need to talk blendability so we've talked pigmentation and I feel that the tartlet is because it's not super pigmented it's sort of shadows that blend themselves which is another reason why I think it's such a great beginner friendly palette because those are just shadows that you can't ruin nothing about your look will come out wrong if you use a tartlet palette no matter your skill level with makeup it's just incredibly easy to use the shadows blend themselves precisely because they aren't too pigmented the green corner then, so the Persona palette has a lot of pigmentation. So because it is so pigmented, I feel this does have, again, they blend really easily, I'm not gonna lie, but that's mainly because they have a very soft texture. And that soft texture and in combination with the pigmentation and the fact that it's quite deep does mean I feel I need to work harder with this palette than I do with the Tartlet. It's workable, it's perfectly fine, don't get me wrong, but I feel I do have to be more careful in my use when I use it. And then the Nabla, it has really nice pigmentation that is also quite buildable, but I do think that those mattes can be a little bit of a faff to work with. You need to figure out what brushes it goes with to really get the look you want, and I just don't feel it's that you know, as varied as you might hope. And um, so some of the shades do kind of blend into each other when you start blending because some of them are so samey samey. Um, so for a six band, that's just not going to give you lots of unique shade, uh, like lots of unique looks. And then for the Viseart, I think it's got great blendability. The Viseart formula is one of my favorites for a reason. So it's just, it's really, really good. Um, but I do feel that Viseart mattes can look quite patchy in a finger swatch and the fact that we don't get a lot of like fun shimmering shades to play with um i do feel that you kind of need to use a brush with these to you know make them perform their best and again it has a pretty soft formula which in my case sometimes leads to like if you have too uh, too much of a heavy hand it can lead to over application of shadow which then uh, like affects the blendability so while i love the viseart i'm gonna have to give the point to the tart just because you just can't screw it up with the tart it's just foolproof every time it takes no brain space whatsoever so that's why they win round number 10. and then we have fallout number 11 is this round and the tart is because it's just not that pigmented it's it's just not very prone to fallout um, there are no flaky shimmers that could drop down your cheeks. I don't experience any fallout with this at all. Then the Persona is the kind of formula that is so soft that if you don't like tap off your brush, etc., it could lead to fallout quite easily, also because it is very deep. So I feel this palette is best used if you do your eyeshadow before the rest of your makeup because once this falls onto your base, you could just ruin your foundation very quickly. So that's why perhaps not that perfect. And then in the Nabla, we get those more sparkly things. So with the Nabla, I feel because it has the texture, this is a, the kind of palette that potentially has the fallout that comes throughout the day like as you blink and the shadow starts to move around and break up from the oils on your lid 
it could fall down your face. Don't use a glitter glue. In my experience, a glitter glue just hangs on to the mica particles, but the shade is still going to fade. So my recommendation is to always double prime your lids. Make sure you use a primer against creasing and then another primer to ensure the vibrancy. A sticky primer is still needed, um, but also one that blocks out your actual lid shade, I feel is a must have for a shadow to look vibrant the entire day and to minimize fallout. Um, lastly, the Viseart has, a, like I already said, a really outstanding, very soft formula. But because of that soft formula, like the Persona, you have to be very careful when you stick your brush in. You could overdo it. It definitely is, again, that kind of formula that you need to tap off and go with like a little goes a long way kind of thing. So. This is one that you can very easily prevent fallout from, but if that's something you're very worried about, then maybe don't choose the, uh, the Viseart. For me here, in terms of fallout and how easy it is to use, the Tartlet definitely wins. And my last round is longevity. How long does this last on your lids? Provided you double prime, like I do. I feel that that gets the best wear out of the day. I feel that the Tartlet has no issues with wearing throughout the day. These do fade a little bit, I would say. They kind of lose their vibrancy. But then again, they're not that vibrant to begin with, so you don't notice this that much. So I don't have any issues with this myself, but uh, in terms of making sure it like lasts all day, I think you can do better. In the Persona palette, I feel that there's like the, the shimmers in it almost have that creamy texture to it. Um, and that works really well to make them look very vibrant, but I do feel that after about eight hours or so, it starts to wear a little bit more. So I don't feel that that is the most long lasting formula. And then the Nabla has good wearability, but like I said, this does lead to a bit of fallout throughout the, uh, throughout the day because that sparkle can fall, fall off your eyes which again, makes them not super long lasting. Again, it doesn't happen until like eight hours into it for me, uh, but if you are very prone to that kind of fallout because of your eye shape, then this may be something you wanna stay away from. And then lastly, I think the Viseart has the best wear time over a double primed lid for me personally. I have zero issues. The shimmers look vibrant and intense as they are when you apply them in the morning. The mattes stay looking smooth no creasing for as long as 12 plus hours a day. So the Viseart here, again, gets the point. And that means that the red corner has three points, the green corner has one point, the yellow corner has two points, and the blue corner has six points, which means that the Viseart Kashmiri is our winner today. So those are the points the way I would give them. Of course, this doesn't have to be your division of points. Leave me a comment down below to let me know what your division are was. I would love to know. And of course, these palettes aren't bad palettes at all. Just because the Persona only got one point. Maybe if I were to put it up against other palettes, it might have gotten more points. Who knows? Um, but yeah, these are all really nice palettes. I rate all of these highly. There's a reason why these are still in my makeup collection. So I'm definitely not hating on anything here. So give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more by me. I make several videos a week, so I hope you like to stay tuned for more. And I hope to see you in my next video. Bye-bye. <laughs>